Welcome once again to The Breakfast. Uh, just, you know, as we wrap up the program this morning, we cannot, you know, not speak about uh, the major event happening in the United States of America today. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will officially be sworn in as the next president and vice president of the U.S. And, of course, it's uh, another four years of making history in the best way that they can. After a four-year-long period of uh, President Donald Trump and how that turned out, we will now get into a conversation this morning on what the expectations are really for the United States and Africa relations. And, of course, that includes us here in Nigeria. We've invited uh, to speak with us this morning, first of all, uh, our in-house guest who will be our senior news editor, Mr. Uh, Kayo De Ladende. Thank you. Good morning Good to morning. you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. You know, <laughs> I feel like I'm in uh, Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. We also have um, via Zoom, uh, Professor Bola Akinterowa, uh, former DG NIA. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for speaking with us this morning, sir. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's much delight to okay. be with you. All right. Um, I'm going to start with a, you know, a big one. I'm, I'm, the, one of the things that I read um, while preparing for this interview was that the United States of America doesn't necessarily need Nigeria or Africa. And, you know, we, we should be the ones demanding better from our leaders and from our leadership, um, you know, to, to have a better continent and a better uh, development here in Nigeria. So let's, let's ha first of all have you speak on that. Do you agree that the U.S. doesn't necessarily need us or need Africa in general? It is not known in history where any sovereign state, no matter how powerful, can be an island on itself. There are many things um, um, the United States um, has, but uh, many other things too it does not have, which Nigeria, Africa do have. The beauty of it all is that one continent, one people, one country that God carefully created, I think is uh, here in uh, the African um, continent. All right. Um, one more question for you, uh, Professor Akinteriwa. We know the stand of uh, uh, the outgoing president, Donald Trump, regarding immigration and how he basically views you know, people of the black race. And it seems like it's quite a contrast when we look at uh, Joe Biden. And people are optimistic that this might give a fresh impetus, a fresh stimulus to the U.S.-Africa, U.S.-Nigeria relations. Would you agree with that thought? All right, while we wait to get Professor Akintero back on the line, let's throw that question to our in-house uh, correspondent and senior editor, Mr. Kaede Ladende. Yeah, quite, quite an important issue that we need to really look at. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, a friend spoke with me a few days ago. He just came back from Dallas, and it was like so many blacks are so excited that um, for the fact that uh, Biden had close to 85% uh, of the black votes, you know, underscores how important Biden is and the kind of support he enjoys from the black people. And he has also, you know, at many fora, you know, identified with the blacks. You remember some of the things he said, even this Capitol Hill, you know, it was on record that he was saying that if those protesters were blacks, you know, it could have been more devastating the kind of attacks they would have uh, been meet, I mean, meted up by the police. So the blacks have a whole sense of belonging. You can even look at the list of the people that will be performing at the inauguration. It gives you that sense that this guy identifies with them and they are so excited about that. But like, uh, I love that first question you raised, quite controversial, you know. To a large extent, even we Africans, including our leaders, we actually don't know how important we are in terms of our population. You know, most times when we look at this population, sometimes we, uh, we, we the, 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 the Western world see it from the angle of an asset. And sometimes we think they see liability, but they see more threat. All right, well, let's more, let's uh, let's come back power. to you now because, uh, or let's let's hold on with you for a moment. I, I'm, I understand we have a uh, Professor Akintero back on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, I do. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you for, for joining us again. I was trying to find out your perspective on Donald Trump's, you know, anti-immigration policies, his opinion towards the black, black race, and how Joe Biden seems to bring a different angle, seems to bring diversity. Look at his, his cabinet team, you know, we are aware that there are two Nigerians there. So how do you think, you know, this, or how would you compare both, basically, Trump and uh, Joe Biden, and what Nigeria basically stands to gain? Donald Trump has a focus, but the focus is very myopic at best. Joe Biden also has a focus, which looks at the future, looks at the implications for uh, good neighborliness. In this case, the fundamental mistake uh, Donald Trump is making is the belief that um, Mexico in particular a country that actually uh, prompted the building of, um, you know, um, concrete uh, borders to prevent anybody sneaking in, not knowing quite well that at the end of the day, the, the survival of the people of America in itself is intertwined with the security of the immediate uh, neighboring countries. So in this case, I think that uh, with the appointment of um, three Nigerians in particular, uh, Osari Men, uh, Okolo, who actually um, is a specialist in this area of um, COVID-19, is a member of the response team. We also have uh, another woman, um, a lawyer, Fumi Olon Nikpa Badejo, all right, who is supposed um, to work, especially in the, in the committee, to look at uh, the excesses, the unethical uh, dimensions of um, the policies of um, Donald Trump. And more significantly, we have uh, this um, our brother, Adewale Adeyema, uh, appointed um, deputy secretary. Now, if you look at the personality, the integrity, the character of these three uh, Americans of um, Nigerian um, origin. They have uh, a sort of um, inbuilt, um, you know, competence that will be required in growing, in redefining, you know, policies in the U.S. So the fundamental difference between Joe Biden and um, Donald Trump in their approach to political governance is that Joe Biden has eyes that quickly see. Joe Biden identifies people who would be able to call the U.S. Donald Trump doesn't have that. Donald Trump has a policy of holier than thou. He's always better than any other person. You criticize him, he, he doesn't uh, have the capacity to answer directly. He holds other people responsible. So in this case, you cannot compare at all a Joe Biden with uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump actually is a problem on, on himself, and he brought the problem from the private sector to political governance. This is the... All right, um, okay. Well, um, Professor Akintan, we'll come back to you. Um, you know, let's you know, speak with Mr. Ladende again. The, um, regardless of you know, their personalities, um, you know, I, I had mentioned earlier that a lot of people expected a lot from the Barack Obama administration. Um, there's also the expectations, you know, that Democrats and Republicans would, you know, have different foreign policy with regards to Africa um, and the black American community. But what's most important really is the United States mm -hmm. and what it can benefit from Africa and from Nigeria. It has nothing to do with Joe Biden and his, it doesn't matter if he has uncles here in Nigeria. What's important <laughs> is <laughs> what the United States stands to gain from its relations with Nigeria and, and with uh, the African continent. Um, it, Donald Trump's policies, a lot of, you know, uh, in the four years that he was there were mostly geared towards somehow reducing the influence that China had um, in Africa because China's influence was slowly growing. They were, you know, they were digging in bit by bit into Africa. Uh, Professor Quintero, I think you would also respond to this. So let's start with that. 
How do you think Joe Biden's you know, policies might be a little different? Okay. Uh, um, sorry, or maybe also building up to what Donald Trump had uh, put in place. I, I'm aware you have a limited time for this discussion, but it's quite verse. And um, looking at what you said, it's quite, um, it's neither here nor there in terms of um, opinions. You know, when uh, uh, America has told us that um, it's not just a strong institution, you also need strong individuals. You also need to understand that the leadership also counts in this whole case. You know, as much as we know the differences between the Republican policy and that of the Democrats in terms of their agenda for Africa, yeah. and which we notice that uh, beyond whatever Obama represented, because uh, I, it's still on record, nothing much was really enjoyed by Africa because we had so much high hopes. And probably that's one of the reasons why we need to be careful about our expectation from Biden too. But Biden has shown more commitment. We are going to see a whole lot of consolidation on what uh, Obama did. You can even see him recruiting some of the people that worked with Obama four years ago. So we're going to see a consolidation on that. And uh, we should also bear in mind that uh, beyond what America stands for, there are a lot of policies that the Democrats have in favor of Africa. You know, we have the, uh, is it the Obama Foundation now? We have some of them resident in many African countries that Trump ignored. So these things are being reenacted. We've seen them getting involved in some of these policies and direction. Their, 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 their national budget definitely also have some things uh, for Africa. I, I hate to say this, you know, each time we talk about Africa, two things come to mind. We talk about AIDS in terms of health, and we talk about HIV, AIDS. That's quite derogatory. But it just tells us that beyond expecting so much from the West, we should bear in mind that whatever, whether it's Biden, whether it's Trump, America will still come first. Forget the fact that Trump used that to win election. They would definitely consider themselves first. Look at the vaccines now. Until they take care of their people, yes. we ain't expecting anything. So I agree with you that we shouldn't just rest on our earths and, oh, Biden is now the president. It's going to be a better deal for Africa. However, like the prof said, it's a global village. We can't do without one another. We have something to give them, and they have something to give us. And probably they have more to give us in terms of expertise, in terms of knowledge. But trust me, we have so much natural resources mm. that the Western world can look away. They Mr. are Mr. definitely Kandilani, interested. They, indeed, we can't wait to really dive into this, especially with uh, uh, our expert here, Professor Akin Terawa, I know, on ground. But let's, let's uh, first uh, take a listen to this. We have uh, the farewell message of outgoing President Donald Trump. has addressed the nation, you know, talking about you know, his hopes for the Biden administration, even uh, saying a word of prayer for him. Let's, uh, let's uh, take a listen. Years ago, we launched a great national effort to rebuild our country, to renew its spirit, and to restore the allegiance of this government to its citizens. In short, we embarked on a mission to make America great again for all Americans. As I conclude my term as the 45th President of the United States, I stand before you truly proud of what we have achieved together. We did what we came here to do, and so much more. This week, we inaugurate a new administration and pray for its success in keeping America safe and prosperous. We extend our best wishes, and we also want them to have luck, a very important word. Mm. President Donald Trump there wishing the American people and the Joe Biden administration luck. They definitely need it. Well, let's uh, bring back Professor Akin Terewa now, who joins us live from Zoom or via Zoom. Uh, Professor Akin Terewa, do we still have you there? Hello, Professor. Hello. Yes. So I would like to ask you this very important question. You, you touched on something earlier before we played that clip from uh, Donald Trump. And you talked about how, you know, Biden was bringing in young people, young people with, you know, great credentials, young Nigerians into his administration. But you take a look at the Nigerian scenario and you find out that there are just as much and just as many qualified Nigerians here in the country. 
why is it that the government is not doing what, what Joe Biden and other countries are doing, bringing in these intelligent, skilled, well-qualified people to be part of their cabinet? I mean, is this a lesson we need to learn? Hello? Professor Akintarawa, are you there? Yo, okay, I can hear you now. Uh, do I um, go over again with my question? Can I hear the question? Okay, I am asking you what lessons Nigeria and the rest of the African continent can learn from Joe Biden's appointment of very young Nigerians with very impressive credentials. Because we have just, you know, as many qualified Nigerians in the country, but, you know, the government is not incorporating them into governance. Yeah, I think that um, the mere fact that uh, President uh, Joe Biden can uh, identify Nigerians who are Americans, who can contribute to economic growth and development, simply sends a new wind of message to Nigeria, that our president, Muhammad Buhari administration, should also open their eyes widely and identify Nigerians at home and abroad. They are there in abundance. In this case, to make use of them, that's the first thing. So they shouldn't just look at um, political officials to be appointed. All the things we do in Nigeria, they over-politicize it to the detriment of competence. Second point, what we can gain is likely a function of um, our capacity to negotiate with uh, Joe Biden. Uh, anything short of that we wouldn't expect any change on the platter of gold. The, the point is that uh, whether it is Donald Trump or Biden or any other president, the United States has some strategic uh, objectives and we pursue it. For instance, the Africa Command, the U.S. Africa Command, currently has its um, headquarters in uh, Tudgat, Germany. In 2004 5 six, efforts were made to relocate the Africa Command from Germany to Nigeria. Nigeria refused. Many other African countries wanted to have it. But the U.S. knows quite well that uh, it was only Nigeria that had the capacity to, to manage and to help control uh, terrorism. So the U.S. didn't accept the offer of other countries and decided to suspend the relocation of the headquarters. The suspension was for 10 years. Now with Joe Biden, it is most likely that um, they will want to pursue the relocation of the Africa Command Headquarters to Nigeria. So in this case, our foreign policy strategies, security strategies, Minister of Foreign Affairs should sit down and begin to look at the public uh, scenarios. Another issue also, we place order for Tucano uh, warp fighter plane. Um, it, they are being manufactured currently in the U.S. and they will be made available um, as from um, 2023 to 2024. Now the politics of that in itself, one thing is to have a contractual agreement. Another thing is to have a technological transfer of its use. I think that our security um, officials 
to also look at the dynamics, the politics, how we can take advantage of that. Especially that Joe Biden has the potential to look favorably to many African demands because terrorism is not uh, limited to any particular powerful or weak country. There is the need for a common strategy. We can take advantage of that. And perhaps more importantly, the mere fact that we have a and some Nigerians play active role in some critical issues at the domestic level. It's a plus for both uh, the U.S. and Nigeria All right. to capitalize on them. Uh, Professor Akintan, so uh, let me also, because I, I want you to go further, you know, with your thoughts on this one. Um, you've, you've just mentioned the um, Minister of Foreign Affairs now. So I want you to speak on... Um, I think I also have um, Mr. Laden to speak on this also. I want you to speak on um, how we can put our best foot forward. Um, we, of course, late last year, ahead of the demise of the former Nigerian ambassador to the U.S., uh, Sumano Sofo, who was 85. Um, we have a younger person now, Dr. Uzoma Emenike, uh, who has now been appointed as a Nigerian ambassador to the U.S., um, how can these persons put, you know, our best foot forward as a nation to ensure that we get the best out of this relationship? And, of course, how relevant also is the uh, Secretary of State for Africa uh, that Joe Biden appoints? Okay, I think we'll have to reestablish connection with him. So, Mr. Laden, let, let, let's start with you on this one. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering why the emphasis was on 85 years. It, it had to be stated, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know. This argument will never stop, and that has to do with, um, um, I believe in competence. I, I, I believe in giving rooms for young people to also try, because uh, how do they get to, you know, try their, their luck if the space is not open for them. At least it's on record now that probably this is going to be the oldest president America has ever had. Yes. You know, so we should not always look away from that. But I think what is different from what you were conversing is the fact that um, when these old people get there, they know that they're running around the expertise, the implementation are better carried out by the young people. And I know the next thoughts would be that uh, the old man in America is probably different from the old man in Nigeria. But beyond that, what I think you want to underscore is the competence, irrespective of age. And I know that a, quite a lot of young people have engaged a, a, in so many issues on international relations. So we need an ambassador who is not just, we just believe that all he needs to get is... Um, you know, the visa fees and uh, this money are being escalated. You don't even get receipts when you pay for your visa. You know, that's a myopic way of thinking. You know, you need to know how many people, definitely there's a huge difference, how many people are lined up every day on, at the U.S. embassies. And you need to see how much America is raking in from Nigeria through just visa. And that tells us that um, there is a need for us to improve on our foreign direct investment. If we have so much to offer these people, definitely they will have so much to do here. So we should be, our security needs to be worked on beyond what the ambassador has to say, because the ambassador must have some good quality to market for people to be interested in coming yes. to Nigeria. Yes. So we need to talk more on our crew, we need to talk more on some of our comparative advantages for America to show more interest in us. Otherwise, trust me, Trump may have voiced it out to call us that derogatory word, but there are a lot of thousands of Americans who hold on to that belief. Even so many Nigerians also hold on to that belief that we are good for nothing, we have nothing to offer. So. Beyond that, we need to do so much. We need to get a young Nigeria who believes so much in Nigeria. You know, as much as the person must have been well-traveled, most definitely we've appointed an ambassador. But I'm just looking at beyond that ambassador, whatever he has to do or setting the agenda for him, that um, for America to take you seriously, you must take yourself seriously. Yeah. Uh, uh, Professor Akin Tenrua, can you can you quickly speak on that? I'm asking... Um, about how Nigeria can put, you know, the, its best foot forward 
uh, to become even more relevant to the United States. We have uh, Geoffrey Onyema, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We have a new United States um, or Nigerian ambassador to the U.S. Nice. after the death of uh, Sylvanus and so forth. Uh, she is a female, actually, Dr. Uzoma Emenike. Um, so what do you think that they must do to uh, present the best Nigeria to the Joe Biden presidency? I think the problem is not how. The problem basically is whether or not we want to do what is right. If you want to present your best 11 in a football match, you decide to operate on the, you know, on the basis of objectivity of purpose. In Nigeria, we have a policy of federal character. Hmm. The federal character is never executed on the basis of getting the very best in the region you want to have a candidate. Hmm. So this is the problem. It's not that we don't have a very competent people. Now Nigerians are doing well outside of Nigeria. They are doing well the world over. Why? Because the people there, they operate on the basis of a, a scientific objectivity of purpose. There is no sentiment there. So when you are in Europe, in America, if you are resuming duty, 8 a.m. is 8 a.m., 4 p.m. is 4 p.m. Have you ever seen in Nigeria where you invite um, a Nigerian minister to an event and he's attending on time? He will be giving you um, um, excuses here and there. The Nigerian minister can, can have uh, two, three appointments at the same time, and they will be trying to do that. So what makes things work elsewhere is simply because they determine that this is what we want. In Nigeria, we don't have a government that is determined to say this is the direction we are going to. The determination is not there. The political will is not there. So if you're not asking me how can we present our best um, professionals, either here in Nigeria or abroad, please, we must remove all sentiment. We must determine that we will field the best candidates. And in that case, you, you fish for them. You place an advert. You look at their records. Not just um, somebody joining a political party um, in the morning, 8 a.m., in the afternoon, he becomes a candidate for presidential election. And then the following day, he's elected. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. The issue is simply that we do not believe in that. Where, for instance, somebody scores um, uh, 250 points in jump, he cannot get admission. Somebody will score less than 200, admission will be given. All right. Then why do you talk about um, having your best professionals? Hmm. Uh, so Professor when they graduate, what type of uh, expertise and specialization would, would they have? Hmm. Professor Akintarewa, I wanted us to talk uh, on this issue of human rights violation and human rights issues. During that NSAS protest, we saw, you know, world powers speaking about this, especially Joe Biden. He released a statement condemning, you know, the issues of police brutality and all of that in Nigeria. Do you expect that you know, Joe Biden and a Joe Biden administration in the U.S. would put more pressure on the Nigerian government to you know, obey the rule of law, to, to basically respect human rights in the country? I think that uh, Joe Biden will surely do more than that. Um, the three pillars of um, U.S. foreign policy are basically democracy, free market, and these are uh, human rights. Human rights, those are, uh, you know, all these are the values are selling to the whole world. They've been preaching the salmon of uh, democracy, salmon of uh, a non-violation of uh, human rights. So in this case, under Joe Biden, if um, Joe Biden is to move away from um, making America great, making America great again, so that America can be first in whatever they are doing, what used to be respected the world over 
included this factor of human rights. Mm. And in this case, I think the foreign policy of Joe Biden is necessarily going to be making America respected again. All right. So without that, uh, I think uh, it will just be a, a change in continuity. All right. Thanks, um, Professor Bola Kinteriwa, uh, former DG, Nigeria Institute of International Affairs. Thanks for your time and thanks for speaking with us. Uh, of course, we would always be bringing you in to have follow-up discussions on this as the Biden presidency kicks off uh, today. Thanks once again. Thank you. All right. And uh, Mr. Kaidi Ladendi, also thank, uh, thank you, you for stepping in. Uh, you from, have a choice. From, down, <laughs> from downstairs, you know, to upstairs. <laughs> so stopping by and being at a breakfast. Good morning to you. It's a pleasure. All right. Uh, just before we go, we have a little bit of sports to talk about. Uh, mm. Say hi to a Chelsea fan today. They might need a hug <laughs> anywhere around uh, the, the country. Give a Chelsea fan a hug today. And uh, we'll talk sports next with uh, Wally Scott.